。好，咁呢段片咧就同大家解決翻點樣去咧用一個二分件嘅方式咧，去將一堆嘅生物，無論係動物或者植物咧，去分開嘅。咁初中咧就叫做 key 嘅啫，咁去到高中咧就叫做大 c o r t e r m u s key。咁中文咧就叫二分件，咁用二分件咧，顧名思義啦，就係、是、你有一堆嘢喺樹，我要將佢分成兩份啊。咁分別呢個二分件咧就係講緊啦，佢係符合 A 呢個條件，同埋唔符合 A 呢個條件。咁陣間咧，我哋就有啲例子示範多一次俾你睇。咁而家咧就同大家講下，要去利用二分件嘅時候啦，有啲咩最基本嘅步驟？你可以逐步逐步跟住去做，咁第一個呢，就係有一啲好嘅習慣啦，就係睇一睇一條題目先，將佢俾你嘅一啲動物或者係植物，咁樣呢，就做一個好初步嘅分類，咁啊因為假設咗你係有溫個書㗎嘛。你有温個書咁，即係話啦，對啲動物啊、植物嘅理解呢，你應該有好基本、好基本嘅概念嘅。例如啦，我哋用翻題目呢做個示範啦。哦，咁啊，蝴蝶呢，佢係昆蟲嚟㗎嘛。咁基本昆蟲佢有六隻腳，你應該要知道㗎嘛。哦，蝙蝠呢，佢係哺乳類嚟嘅。咁哺乳類佢有佢嘅特性，咁你應該都會知道㗎嘛，係咪？咁啊，又或者啦，誒、呃、個鷹啊，佢係鳥類啊。OK， 咁啊，鳥類咁起碼你有啲基本概念你要知噶嘛，係咪？咁知道咗嘅話咧，就係、是、解決咗第一步啦。咁第一步咧知道咗咯，而去到第二步咧，就真係見真章啦。你要去指出一啲 identify， 去辨認到一啲好獨特、好特別嘅一啲結構 unique 咧，即係好獨有嘅意思，即係話啦，你有我冇嘅。或者我有佢冇嘅，咁無論啦係動物植物都得嘅。今次點解我淨係寫 animal 咧？咁啊，因為啦，我哋呢兩條例子咧，我哋個 quiz 啊都係講 animal 啊嘛，係咪？咁下次題目可唔可以問你植物啊？梗係可以啦。咁翻翻嚟呢度咯，我哋想要睇嘅所謂嘅特徵咧，係有個條件嘅，而我哋需要去觀察嘅特徵咧，都係講緊一啲外在嘅特徵 ，observing 即係觀察啦。咁啊，啲特徵咧都係外在嘅。咩叫外在嘅特徵咧？你幻想下啦，就係、是、你唔一定係喺條河啊，喺個花附近咧揾到只蝴蝶或者揾到條魚嘅。係人哋咧可能撈起咗上嚟啦，跟住話俾你聽嗱，我捉咗條魚啊，我捉咗只蝴蝶啦。嗱，佢死咗噶啦，唔好意思啊，真係佢死咗噶啦。咁你就望下佢個表面特徵啦，就即係話啦，一啲內在嘅結構，一啲 internal。一啲身體入面嘅結構咧，你係應該見唔到嘅，你齋望嘅啫。咁所以啦，有一樣嘢要留意嘅，就係、是、一啲佢有冇脊椎，有脊椎冇脊椎，你係唔應該攞嚟做你嘅 key 嘅，因為你都睇唔到。你隻眼係 X-ray 嚟嘅咩？你可以望到只生物入面有咩結構咩？你望唔到嘅。第二啦，就係咧，佢住喺邊啊？例如啦，哦，佢系住喺水嘅，哎呀，佢系住喺陆地嘅，你都系唔知道嘅。就正如我头先咁样讲，你见到嘅未必系只活生生嘅嘢，一条鱼已经摆咗喺个台面上面啦。咁佢本身住边，你鬼知咩？你话唔系啊，鱼嘅，梗系落住喺水噶啦。呢个系你学过嘅嘢啫。你幻想下，而家有一只你未知嘅生物，就摆咗喺实验室个台上面。佢係咪住喺水？你唔會知。佢識唔識飛？你都唔會知。但係你望到佢有冇鱗片，你會見到。佢有冇一對翼，你會見到。呢、这個就係外在特徵嘅重要性。然後啦，就利用呢啲外在嘅特徵呢，去分門別類啦。而嗰個比喻呢，就好似將一嚿好大嚿嘅麵包切做一塊塊。所以頭先呢，我係講嘅就係話呢點解佢叫二分法啊？你幻想下，我有一塊麵包，我而家呢就係、是、要將佢切開佢 ，OK？ 切咗嘅話啦，就點啊？咁就一片麵包出現咗囉，係咪？咁係咪就一片麵包對剩低嘅呢一嚿麵包啊？係咪分咗兩嚿嘢啊？然後啦，我就再繼續切佢，係咪又切切多一片麵包出嚟啊？得嘛？咁所以啦，就係、是、透過呢個切一刀切一刀，就將啲生物每次分做兩組，跟住又分做兩組，跟住又分做兩組，直至一刻將所有生物分乾分淨為止。所以呢個呢，就叫二分件。俾一俾呢個例子你睇先啦。我有一堆嘅動物，首先我又點啊？佢有毛髮同埋冇毛髮。
係咪就係符合 A 呢個條件，同埋唔符合 A A 呢個條件啊？我咪分到啦，哦，有啦，有一隻誒紅人啦，有隻暴雨類啦，佢就有毛髮嘅。咁啊冇毛髮嘅話，仲一大堆㗎喎、哦。哦，跟住呢，我哋再分有羽毛同埋冇羽毛啦，係咪啊？係咪都係講緊有呢個特徵同埋冇呢個特徵啊 ？OK， 跟住啦，又分到隻雀仔出嚟啦，跟住啦，又係去到乾嘅皮膚同埋濕嘅皮膚。咦，兩 Sir， 咁咩乾嘅皮膚、濕嘅皮膚，咪好似講緊兩樣嘢囉。其实都系讲紧啦，一个系干嘅皮肤，一个唔系干嘅皮肤。咁有一样嘢我想讲嘅就系、是，当我哋运用呢啲条件嘅时候咧，佢哋都应该要系一对对嘅，就系、是、A 同埋唔系 A，B 同埋唔系 B， 就唔能够点样做呢？如果啦，你有一个条件就系、是，哦，佢呢个条件咧就系有毛发，佢 with fur 嘅，而另一个条件咧就走去讲啦，佢系有翼嘅。如果你將佢呢兩個當做係一個二分件嘅方法呢，呢、这個並不正確，係錯嘅分法，因為唔公平。因為點解啊？你一邊就就喺講毛髮，另一邊就就喺講對翼。你應該係先去講有毛同埋冇毛，然後啦喺冇毛髮嗰處呢，我再分有翼同埋呢冇翼，應該咁樣先為之一對對嘅分法。所以好多同學咧都喺呢度搞錯曬嘅，咁所以啦，第四句咧就係頭先你見嘅呢幅圖嗰句嘢啦，就係我哋去問一系列嘅問題，而呢個問題係將會有兩個選項，就係符合 A 同埋並不符合 A 呢個條件，就將啲生物分開做一組、第二組、第一、第一組，又有第二組，又有第一組，又有第二組。就將佢分開、分開、分開。咁陣間咧，兩 Sir 咧用呢兩條做個例子嘅時候咧，你係唔一定要跟我嘅次序去畫個二分件嘅。咁啊，因為啦，好似呢幅圖咁樣，佢先用毛髮去分，然後再分羽毛，跟住再分皮膚，跟住再分鱗片。咁你話啦，喂，兩 Sir， 我可唔可以一開始就分咗鱗片先啊？梗係可以啦。然後啦，再去分翻佢有冇羽毛又得唔得啊？梗係可以啦。咁所以就陣間我講嘅答案呢，唔係絕對嘅答案，佢係其中一個表達嘅方式。但係有一啲條件我哋一定要留意嘅，就係、是、一啲內在結構你唔可以用，有冇個脊骨，有冇個尾龍骨，你鬼知咩？你係唔會睇到佢有冇尾龍骨㗎嘛喺個表面。又或者啦，佢係有個肺呀，定係有個腮呢？喂，你都係睇唔到㗎嘛。好，咁而家呢，我哋就嚟睇一條題目啦噃。咁啊，睇返啦，今次啦，哦，即係蝴蝶呢。頭先我哋講過啦，佢係昆蟲嚟嘅。咁啊，魚啊，魚啊，魚類啦。咁魚類有啲咩嘅特徵，你都要知道啩？佢個皮膚有啲鱗片嘅，咁啲鱗片呢，就係滑潺潺嘅鱗片，咁你應該要知啩。跟住啦，蝙蝠呢，就暴雨類，暴雨類得嚟呢，咦，又有對翼㗎喎、哦，都幾特別㗎喎、哦。咁當然暴雨類都仲有其他嘅特徵啦，例如佢哋係有毛髮啦，係咪？跟住啦，蝸牛啦。蜗牛最基本你見到有個殼啦，係咪？咁啊寫低哦，佢有個殼咯，係咪？咁你話誒、欸、兩 Sir， 佢係無脊椎動物喎，係啊，你啱㗎。但係問題就係、是、我哋能唔能夠用脊椎嚟做個分別啊？係唔能夠嘛，所以你明知佢有脊椎 ，sorry， 你唔可以講。咁可能你會問啦，喂，咁兩 Sir， 咁蜗牛仲有啲咩可以分啊？例如佢觸角啦，咁觸角嘅英文呢，就係、是、antenna。咁其實都係其中一個你可以用嘅特徵喎，係咪？而長頸鹿咁，我起碼我哋學過啦，佢都係哺乳類動物啦，係咪？而長頸鹿啦，咁我哋起碼都學過啊，佢係哺乳類動物。咁哺乳類動物起碼有 hair， 我哋都知道啩，係咪？跟住去到啦，鷹咧自不然係鳥類，咁鳥類啦，咁有啲咩特徵啊？望一望啦，就一定係有羽毛啦，係咪？咁當我哋知道咗每一隻生物都有一啲好獨特嘅特徵之後呢。咁我哋就可以嚟料啦噃，一開波咁啊寫返 animal 先，哦好多嘅動物，然後啦，我哋就不如就分咗個殼先啦，好嘛？有殼同埋冇殼，我哋即刻就會知道啦。行左手邊嘅呢，就係 with 個 shell， 就係個殼。咁啊隔離就咩啊？隔離就係冇殼嘅。嗱留意喎，頭先我咪講嘅兩個條件係要符合同埋並不符合啊嘛。咁呢個咪就係符合有殼同埋。另一邊就係冇殼啦，咁有殼嘅咩呀？搞掂咗啦，就係、是、蝸牛啦，係咪呀？
。咁武學嘅仲有咁多隻，喎，點樣分法呢？不如就分咗隻蝴蝶出嚟先啦。蝴蝶係昆蟲嚟㗎嘛，最基本佢就點啊？佢係有六隻腳啊嘛，啱唔啱啊？咁其餘，喂，咁真係冇㗎嘛？嗱，鷹呢，兩隻爪啦，啊，我俾埋對翼你啦，好冇 o k 咁啊，魚，咦，魚冇腳㗎喎、啊。哦，咁啊，蝙蝠啦，蝙蝠咁啊，兩兩隻腳咯，你當係，咁啊，長頸鹿都叫四隻腳啊，咁即係話啦，都冇另一隻嘢呢，係有六隻腳嘅，咁其餘係叫咩啊？咪就叫做沒有六隻腳咯。咁沒有六隻腳之後啦，咁啊，即係有六隻腳嘅就係蝴蝶啦，又搞掂埋啦。咁啊，冇六隻腳咯，咁啊，頭先啦，蝴蝶解決咗啦，哇，解決咗啦，咁啊，得返。魚、蝙蝠、鷹同埋呢個長頸鹿啦，咁不如啦，我哋分埋隻雀出嚟先啦。隻雀就點啊？有羽毛嘅係咪啊 ？With 個 feather 嘅，跟住隔離就點啊 ？Without 沒有個 feather 嘅，冇羽毛嘅，係咪又分埋隻鷹出嚟啦？跟住啦，就到冇羽毛咯，冇羽毛嘅話就係魚啦、蝙蝠啦同埋長頸鹿啦。咁我哋分埋啦，有冇鳞片呢？咁啊搞掂埋條魚啦，係咪啊？有鳞片，有咩鳞片啊？滑潺潺嘅鳞片。我哋今次好指到明，你摸過條魚都知啦，佢就係滑潺潺啦。咁所以呢，呢、這個呢就係條魚啦。咁而家得返蝙蝠同埋長頸鹿，大家都係哺乳類動物喎，兩 Sir， 佢哋都有毛髮㗎喎。咁即係唔用得呢個條件啦。咁仲有啲咩條件可以用啊？有翼同埋冇翼啦。咁所以啦，最尾尾嗰個呢，埋尾嘅就係、是、有翼 with 個 wings， 同埋另一邊就係 with 到個 wing 啦。OK， 咁所以啦，呢邊呢，就係蝙蝠，而呢邊呢，就係剩低嘅最後一隻長頸鹿，咁就搞掂晒啦。咁你話啦，喂，兩 Sir， 今次呢，你就係用呢個有冇學去行先啦，係咪？咁你話啦，我唔一開始唔用有冇學，我一開始就去用有翼同冇翼得唔得啊？梗係得啦。咁所以今次嘅次序呢，就係、是、任意調動都冇乜所謂嘅。咁但係呢啲呢，都係一啲好典型嘅外在結構。咁有啲同學呢，都會用到其他特徵嘅，例如觸角啦。咁好似觸角嘅話呢，咁啊蝸牛啦，同埋蝴蝶呢，其實都有嘅。咁你話啦，死啦！咁有兩隻嘢都有觸角喎，咁咪再睇下蝴蝶係有翼㗎嘛，蝸牛係冇翼㗎嘛，或者用返蝸牛個殼去分類，咁啊蝴蝶又真係冇殼㗎嘛，咁你咪會將呢兩隻嘢又分得開囉，係咪？好，跟住啦，我哋到第二條題目啦，咁啊有鷹、蜜蜂、青蛙、蜘蛛、鯊魚同埋 Mira， 即係人類啦。咁我哋睇返啦一啲最外在嘅特徵啦，例如呢鷹嘅，我哋見到呢，佢有羽毛啦。有對翼啦，同同埋佢哋個嘴呢係一個喙部啦。嚟咁啊，蜜蜂啦就係昆蟲嚟嘅，咁啊有返六隻腳啦，亦都有翼啦。青蛙啦，佢個皮膚呢，我哋呢就稱之為一個濕潤嘅皮膚啦，又或者啦，我哋叫做裸露嘅皮膚啦。咁啊，因為呢，佢咪冇鱗片呢，佢遮蓋住嘅。蜘蛛啦就有八隻腳啦。跟住去到鯊魚啦，咁我哋見到呢，佢有嗰個鰭啦，背鰭啊、側鰭啦，咁當然啦，佢都係魚類啦，所以呢，佢哋都係有呢個鱗片嘅。咁但係佢同一般魚嘅鱗片呢，又有少少結構上嘅分別。而呢度呢，都想提下啦。鯊魚嘅鱗片呢，就同一般魚嘅鱗片有啲分別嘅，佢就一個 V 型嘅，好似啲鋸齒狀咁樣款。咁呢啲鱗片呢，我哋叫做盾鱗啊，盾牌個盾啊，咁樣呢，就有少少概念俾一俾大家先啦。咁啊，去到 m i r r o r 啦，即係人類呢，咁啊最基本啦係哺乳類，哺乳類呢，就有呢個 hair 啦，係咪？就係咁去到 m i r r o r 啦，就係哺乳類，哺乳類呢，就即係有毛髮啦。好，咁我哋呢，就即刻嚟了啦。咁我哋呢，就有 animal 啦。一嘢分咩好呢？今次分做八隻腳啦，係咪？有八隻腳，同埋呢冇八隻腳，咁所以啦，我哋呢一嘢就已經有咗個蜘蛛出現咗啦。咁其餘嗰啲啦冇八隻腳嘅分咩好呢？不如我哋試下分對翼出嚟啊，有翼同埋冇翼啊。咁啊有翼嘅，同埋呢冇翼嘅，咁我哋又分到一堆㗎啦已經。咁啊，有翼嘅仲有兩隻喎，兩 Sir 仲有鷹同埋呢個蜜蜂喎，誒唔緊要啦，因為呢，我哋仲有分羽毛，咁所以啦，鷹呢就係有羽毛，咁啊蜜蜂呢就係冇羽毛。
咁樣咧，英同埋蜜蜂咧又分得出嚟咯喎，一個就 eagle 啦，一個咧就係蜜蜂啦。好，咁啊得翻青蛙、鯊魚同埋人類啦。咁今次咧唔用論篇啊，講下個鰭啦，係嘛？啊，佢有啲魚鰭嘅，另一邊咧就係咧冇魚鰭嘅。咁啊，自不然啦，都會知道啦。呢邊咧一定係鯊魚啦。咁呢邊啊，就得翻人類同埋青蛙咯。咁啊，好容易分啫。哦，咁我知啦。Mira 好靚仔啊嘛，我寫 handsome 得唔得啊？唔得啊，因為 handsome 呢家嘢好主觀嘅。咁所以咧，我哋就要講啦，有毛髮啦，同埋冇毛髮啦。咁我哋就可以將個人類咧，同埋個青蛙咧。都分埋出嚟啦。咁今次你見到咧，我咧就用咗有冇八隻腳去分先嘅。咁你話唔係，我一開始用毛髮去分得唔得？咁梗係可以啦。分咗有毛髮嘅咪就係人類咯，其餘冇毛髮嘅咪再分過咯，睇下有冇翼啊咁樣嗰啲。咁你話啦，喂，我唔用有冇翼得唔得啊？我直頭講有冇呢個羽毛，我都可以分到只鷹出嚟嘅。咁所以啦，記緊咧就係嗰啲一對對有冇有冇咁樣樣去畫我哋嘅二分鍵。In this video, we are going to talk about the general steps to use the dichotomous key to classify different organisms. In junior form, we simply call this the key, but in the senior form, we call this for the full name, dichotomous key. So what does it mean di? That means two, right? So from the name dichotomous key, so we know that we keep dividing a group of the organism, maybe animal, maybe the plants, into two groups. One group they fulfill a particular criteria, and the other group they do not fulfill the particular criteria. So for the steps, first one we need to have a good practice. We need to simply identify the class of the group of the animal at the very beginning. What about the question asks you the plants? Is it possible? Sure. Is possible, but for the following two examples, we are analyzing the animals. So that's why I type animal here. The question, of course, it can ask you to identify different plants to divide them into different groups. So for this good practice, supposingly you should do the revision. So that's why you can simply identify the class or the group first. For example, butterfly is the insect. That's something you should know before. And for the insects, they have six legs. So that's something you should know before. And for the bats, they are the mammals. That's something you should also know and also learn it before. So for the mammals, any features, any unique features they have. For example, they have hairs. For example, they have mammary glands. That's something you should know. And for the eagles, they are the birds. So for the birds, you should also be able to identify they have feathers. Such idea, or they have the beak. So for the good practice, you have a simple idea first, and then you need to identify. The unique or special features of the animals or the plants, and there is a crucial reminder to tell you that the features which we are observing should be the external features. So that means it should be something we can see directly, we can observe directly. So that's why some internal structure they should not be mentioned. In the key, so what does it mean? The internal features, for example, the vertebrates versus the invertebrates. Do they have the backbone? You do not know it by only observing the external features. Your eyes are not the X-ray. You cannot scan the animal and then you know it by your naked eye. But what if? Oh no, Mister Lang, I really put it in the X-ray to examine it. That's another case. So any other structures we do not know, we cannot talk about the lungs because they are also inside our body. Meanwhile, where do they live? For example, they live in water or they live on land. Cannot be used as the key as well. Why? What is the reason behind that? Imagine that you just have the dead body of the particular animal or plants on the bench in the laboratory. For you to do the examination, but for you, you just see the dead body. You never know that 
he it live in water or they live on land. So you may ask that no no no, Mister Leung, the fish they must be living in the water. Or the birds they are flying in the sky. That's something you learn. Remember, you are just doing investigation. When we are doing investigation, we need to rely on our observation, but not our common sense or some. Bias what we learned before. If you just see that oh, this animal they have the wings, so they must be able to fly. No, no, no. The chickens they cannot fly, but we can see they have the wings. So you get my point. We use the external features to do our investigations, and we use the unique and special features. To identify, to classify the animals, to divide them into different group, the metaphor is like cutting the bread into sliced bread one by one. No rush. You just cut it one by one. It's okay. So imagine that you have a loaf of the bread, and then you cut it slice by slice, and then or you get one slice. So that's why you have two group of it, right? And then you cut one more slice, and then you get one more slice here. So we just use the key to do the grouping one by one. So that's why you can see this example. We have a group of animal. So for the first criteria, we ask that do they have the fur? So one criteria is that they have the fur, and for the other requirements that they do not have the fur. So we have. A group of animal they have the fur, and what about the other group? They do not have the fur, so we use another criteria. They have the feather, and then they do not have the feather. We have one more group, and then we use the skin. One group they have the dry skin, and the other group they have the moist skin. So you can see that. Oh no no no, Mister Leung, should we write down that no dry skin? Ah,、uh, it's also okay. You can still see the. Opposite pair, the idea of opposite concept, dry moist, with feather without feather, with fur without fur, and then for the other part with the scale and without the scale, also the opposite idea. So that's why when we are using the key, so the key consists of a series of statement with two choices in each step. To need the user to the correct identification, so that's why we are using the criteria, fulfill A criteria and do not fulfill A criteria, fulfill B criteria and do not fulfill B criteria. So one thing I would like to mention is that some student they may get it wrong. They use that oh one criteria is oh they have the wings. And then for the other criteria, supposedly we should say that without the wings, right? But they get it wrong. They use that one criteria with the wings. But for the alternative criteria, they use that they have the fur. So you can see that is not fair comparison. Once we are talking about the wings, so we focus on the wings with wings and without wings. With scale and without the scale, so you need to use the fair comparison. And then one more reminder is that we shall use the example to demonstrate that there is no fixed order of the series of the statement. So that's why for the following two example, my answer is not the final answer and one and only one answer. No, no, no. We can use the key. But in different order. Okay, so let's take a look at the first question. For each animal, we should identify some unique features. For example, the butterfly they have six legs. So what about the wings? Of、uh, wings is also a way we can identify, right? So for the eagle, they have the wings, and their mouth part they have the beak. And then for the giraffe, they are the mammals. For the bats, they are also the mammals. So at least we can name that they have the hair. But for the bats, at least we see that they also have the wings. 
and for the fish, and you should be able to recall the slimy scale on the fish body. And finally, for the snail, so it is the invertebrate, is it Mr. Le? Yes, it is invertebrate, just like the butterfly. But can you use the backbone as the criteria? No, no, no. So what can you see? You can see the shell and also the antenna. So that's the external structure you can see, right? So let's start the classification. We have a group of animal, and for the animal, let's use the first criteria, the wings as the concept. So with the wings and with those, the wings. So at least we know that with the wings, uh-oh, there are eagle, butterfly, and the bat, Mr. Le, mm, you make the case very complicated. No, no, no. So you can see that with the wings, I can easily identify the butterfly with six legs and without six legs. Is it okay? Sure, why not? With the six legs, butterfly. But what about without the six legs? So there should be the eagle and the bats. So eagle and the bats, how can you identify them? Oh, for eagle, it is the bird, Mr. Leung. They have the beak. But for the bats, they are the mammals. They do not have. So with the beak. And the other one, without the beak. So with the beak, eagle. Da -da. And without the beak, it is the bat. And without the wings, we have the fish, giraffe, and the snail. So what can we use? We can use the scale, right? With the slimy scale, which is the fish. And for the giraffe and the snail, easy idea. One is with the shell and the other without the shell with the shell snail and without the shell giraffe so you can see that easily we can identify these six animals right firstly i use the wings as the criteria what about at the very beginning i use the six legs as the criteria so you can see that i can identify the butterfly at the very beginning because only the butterfly has the six leg for the other five organisms they do not have and then we can use the shell the antenna the beak to identify the snail or the eagle from other organisms step by step understood so let's take a look at the second example. So we have the eagle, bee, frog, spider, shark, and mirror. That's the very famous boys group in Hong Kong. So they are the human being, the mammals. So for the eagle, what can we see is that they have the wings and they have the feather to cover the body. And also for their mouth part, it is the beak. And for the bee, they are the insect. So we can see that they have the six legs and also they have the wings. And for the frog, they have the skin, which is we describe it as the moist skin or the naked skin. Because for the amphibian, they do not have the scale on the body surface. And for the spider, we can see there are eight legs. And for the shark, they are the fish. So they have the fin. And shark, they also have the scales, but the scale is a bit different from the other fish because the shape of the scale is in V shape. And the scales of the shark, we call it dermodentical. So dentical, then it means the teeth because uh, we describe that is a bit like a V shape or just like a teeth. And for human being, because we are the mammals, so that's why very obviously we have the hair. Okay, so let's start the classification. So at the very beginning, we have a group of animals. So let's use the spider as the starting with the egg legs and without the egg legs. So they are the other five animals. And without the egg legs, so let's use the hair 
as one of the criteria with hair so we have the human being and without hair so we have the other four animals so without hair so let's use the feather as the criteria with feather and without feather so obviously we can have the eagle we can use with the fins as the criteria with fin and without the fins so with the fin it is the shark and without the fin we have the final two the bee and the frog so very basic idea for the bee they have six legs with six legs and then for the frog they do not have six legs so that's finally we have the bee and the frog so you can see that firstly we use the egg leg to divide the animal and the hair and then feather so what about i use other structure for example the beak of course you can i use the naked skin of course you can so i hope that you get the idea how can we use the key to divide the animal in two groups step by step